Hi, this is Odin here. Today I'm having a look at the Perfect Effect Warden figure, which is supposed to be Fortress Maximus. Um, he does turn into a head for the real Fortress Maximus. I don't have the current comics that feature this guy, but apparently he's meant to look like the current iteration of Fortress Maximus. Either way, he is a really attractive figure with a really good bulked out aesthetic and uh, I thought I'd give you a look. I actually had a whole bunch of other figures that I'm thinking to review, like especially, for example, Biolante, um, but I've bumped this guy up in my queue and simply because he's the best thing that I've got at the moment. He's really quite good and I hope that it's coming through. I hope it's nice and focused there because the way this guy looks, is it's really something special. Uh, it's it's not your average third-party transformer. It's actually a little bit tricky to get this to show up good on camera, and that's because we've got a really white whites combined with some really dark shades. And you know, putting on camera those that combination always ends up in something being blown out, and that's why I've kind of reverted to my old textured background because I think that helps a little bit. And I've kind of cut my lighting down, so I hope. That, that is showing clearly. I actually reviewed this fully and was not satisfied with the video, so this is like my take two. So here's fingers crossed. You can see that I've started in his fully decked out um, missile spam mode. I've got some missile pods down here on the lower legs and more on his backpack. He does have a very large gun, so I'm going to go ahead and attach this gun. Now you can see at the back here that the gun handle is retractable so it's got a handy little fingernail point to pull it out there's lots of ways he can hold this he could hold it like that like this I tend to put it right back like this and then I grab this one and he kind of holds it underarm in this orientation there it is it's a hugely oversized gun for a robot his size but the bulk of the figure himself it makes it believable. I can buy it that he has this gun. Now it does transform into a gun for the full-sized Fortress Maximus later on and also is part of his tank mode, but look at that. After the review this is how it's staying on my shelf. That's so impressive. I love the way he can sling that sort of upside down there and the fists, um, at least out of the box, are really stiff and sturdy so he can grasp quite firmly the handle so it's not going to slip out and as you can see from this slight change in posture he is not limited to how I first showed him there's a great many possibilities for using this gun okay this gun is not the only gun that he has I'm going to pop this off just by opening up the hands pulling out the handle on the back of the toy we have his alternate weapon which is this this little gun here and again you can flip out a handle handy little thumbnail thing so you don't have to use a screwdriver and he can just grab a hold of it like that so if you don't want to have a massively overpowered weapon you can use a more normal size gun if you so choose it does look pretty cool part of the reason that it has this shield shape on it is that this forms the front of the forehead of the fortress maximus head mode so it's not really random, it's it's a necessity. These nice panels at the front here are extra armor, which can pull off, uh, as can this track at the back. So I'm going to grab a hold of it and pull it off. Now sometimes this bit starts coming off at the same time. I didn't actually want to pull this off, so I'm going to push that back in, make sure it's nice and secure. I've lost the backpack, now I'm going to flip these up and lift it off. So I lost the extra chest armor. Uh, these missile spam pods come off the sides and we flip up the little peg and these go here. And this is his kind of basic mode, his less armored mode. In this mode, Warden isn't really as super powered, so he doesn't have all the gizmos stuck on him, but it does free him up to have more posability. So I've got this on the stand now. I had it on the stand just so I don't drop it when he's got the extra weight on. Now's probably a good time to show that stand. You can see here, that's a pretty secure connection. Now I'm not going to shake that around, it will come off. 
if you're too vigorous, but it does its job. Any stem that can hold it at 90 degrees out like that is pretty good. This is a thick base. Um, the plastic on this stand is around four millimeters thick. That's my best guess. We have a lot of reinforcing on the underside, so it's pretty cool. To get it off, it's as simple as pulling it out from underneath like that. There's a better look at it, PE. This bit can slot on wherever you want. So you've got four positions, as well as those four positions, you can choose to put it on backwards if you want for some leaning forward action. The only weak spot is, uh, this is pure friction here. And once it's on, I don't see any need to ever take it off. So I may be going to apply a little bit of super glue in that gap later on. He does stand just fine without the display base. I mean, there's pretty big feet on him, nice big flat feet. So adequate base to stand on. Posability is pretty high. You can see here we've got some forward shrug going on. That forward shrug is really useful. You can reach forward and grab something with both hands at the same time. Not a lot of transformers can do that. That's pretty cool. We've got up and down rotation, in and out, bicep swivel, elbow more than 90 degrees, wrist swivel, head swivel. The head is on a kind of rocking mechanism, not a ball, but definitely a lot of flexibility. If you don't mind obscuring the face, you can actually turn it sideways, although it becomes hard to see the details like that, hard to take photos, hard to see on video. But if that's how he has to stand in your pose, definitely he can achieve it. The abdominal region here is particularly awesome. I mean, we've got a clicky waist, as well as a ratcheted crunch. Ratcheted ab crunch, look at that. I mean, that's almost unheard of in Transformers toys. This has the same level of posability as a lot of uh, much more flexible action figures. We've got ratcheted hips, but not ratcheted knees. Sometimes these panels can get in the way, but you know, if you want, you can just push them out of the way like that and then bend them back down after posing. So look at that position. It's like a, a crouching down position on the ground. I mean, I, I don't think I've seen, I don't think I've seen another figure that can pull that off and still maintain balance. Part of the balance is due to die cast being on the side panels here. So as well as the side panels, we've got die cast happening on the knee. Now this die cast doesn't feel quite as, uh, I don't know how to put it, it doesn't feel quite as dense as die cast in something like a Soul of Chugokin. I have a feeling that this isn't the same metal. It feels a little bit too light. Uh, it is definitely metal, but what kind of metal it is, I'm not sure. Perfect effect have gone for clicks where they're needed for transformation, and where they're not needed for transformation, they've just gone for friction. So, like any friction joint, it's not going to last forever being stiff, and the more I play with this, obviously, the less stiff it is getting. Straight out of the box, they're really tight, but it's been a couple of days now, and I've played with this you know, several times over that time, and I can definitely feel the friction lessening. Uh, I'm not a kid, I don't play with toys constantly. I'm not gonna play with this till it falls to pieces. It's gonna go on the shelf probably relatively quickly. So it feels very fit for purpose, even though it is lacking a little bit in clicky joints. I mean, I love clicky joints, but uh, this figure has so much going for it, so many good clicky joints in here that I can't complain about the friction joints in the elbows and knees and what have you. Warden aka Fort Max is a headmaster, so I think a good comparison for size is another headmaster. Um, his hardhead, uh, I know he's not called hardhead, he's, what is he, hardbone? Their heads are virtually the same size, so these guys are kind of same class, and they do have a similar bulk and similar chunky, bulky panels stuck all over the place, but Despite those similarities, these are worlds apart. I love this figure. If you look back to my review, I had a lot of good things to say about it. These toys don't exist in the same class, not by a long shot. Um, the plastic is first and foremost totally different. There's a very light and airy feeling with this plastic. It doesn't feel quite as hard or quite as smooth. 
with perfect effects toys the plastic just has a very dense and shiny feel to it as well as feeling quite quite uh, heavy for any given part so there's a kind of a quality built into this figure that just isn't present in some of the other toys I've got from third-party companies the friction levels are not managed as well on some of these other figures like hardbone here he and look at this the friction isn't adequate to keep him in his robot mode even if you put force in the wrong directions the friction on warden down here is stiff you stick something there it stays there and it's it just feels to me like a lot more thought and a lot more work has gone into warden warden is a very complex figure with a lot of very complex paint apps and a lot of high quality materials and although he costs a lot more than some other figures the extra fifty dollars or so feels like it's gone somewhere whereas with things like um, hardhead here he feels a little bit overpriced i think that warden feels about right when comparing it to something like a fans project toy so his quadruple u aka weird wolf they feel like the same ballpark the same universe they look really good together and the design aesthetic matches better than anything else so perfect effect and the headmasters from fans project really go well together but the quality on this guy is actually the plastic feels better to me than the quality on fans project that i'm not sure if that's um a mark against fans project i have the feeling that they purposefully go with this slightly uh matte plastic that's a choice i feel with them uh, maybe in the old days it was just what they had but these days i think it's kind of deliberate but i tend to like this little bit more glossy and a little bit more dense plastic better than what we get in figures like this my other kind of darling of figures at the moment is mastermind creation i love what they've been doing um, especially with the what are they called now feral cons predacons i don't know what they're going by but these figures i'm in love with these figures they are some of my favorite toys the attention to detail is not there when you put it in comparison to Warden. And the only reason I bring it up is because this guy is, is so high-end, he's starting to get to the levels, at least in my mind, of Bandai and Soul of Chugokan. If I had to classify him, I'm tending to think that he fits better with lines like that than he actually does with third-party Transformers. And kind of one of the key things that does that separation are the little details like if you look here on the head you can see there's a, a snip mark from where it was removed from the sprue and that's in a really prominent place right up smack in the middle of the front of the toy and i can see that from far away just with the naked eye and if you care to go over the whole figure there are a number of places like that when i'm talking about that kind of defect on warden they do exist but it is very hard to find one. It took me several minutes, and then after going over the whole figure, I did locate one. The back of the forearm, you can see on each side, there are those little white snips where it's been cut off the sprue, but there is nowhere where you can just look straight onto this figure and point out, oh, look, there's a, a plastic defect. Being a headmaster, his head comes off. We can just pull it straight off like that. Staying in line with the rest of the figure, this is the best head from a headmaster that I own. So I've got most of the headmasters that have come out lately from third parties. Um, this is by far the best one. Some of the things that make it the best one, you can see this tab in here, it locks, the head locks into place, doesn't want to come apart. If you go back to Hardbone's head here, he just goes crazy flailing around. There is no locking here, and if you grab it like this, it kind of squeezes all over the place. This guy doesn't squeeze all over the place. If there is any weakness at all, it's that if you accidentally push sideways on this arm, it can pop off. There's like a little mushroom peg there holding it on. And I'm sure that if you, I did that too many times, it would damage the mushroom peg. But it, it's a pretty good looking head. For the transformation, all he's got to do is pull the legs out like this. There's like an ab crunch. And then halfway through the ab crunch, the face gets covered up. So, I mean, going back to hard head, if I transform him quickly, you can see nothing covers his face. It just hangs out there as a backpack, which is less than desirable. This guy, not so much so. You can still see the mouth, but uh, the eyes are definitely covered up. Very poseable. 
very nice. It's got excellent light piping. I don't really care for light piping. In fact, with most figures, I prefer painted eyes, just like what we saw in the bigger head mode. But um, this light piping is quite exceptional. So if you do like it, it's definitely something on this little figure. The figure itself is painted pretty well too. You can see nice silvers here, a silver in the face, red stripes in the arms. Up until now, Hardbone's head has been my favorite headmaster. He's been demoted to number two. I clearly like this guy a lot better. Um, I like the posability, but his joints were a little bit weak. If I'm going to compare it to something like the Fans Project's heads, although I do love those as play sets, the straight up and down narrowness of these guys, uh, lack of ball joints, it does play against them. They're good quality and they do have some face covering up gimmicks at the back too, but just as individual toys that aren't part of something else, they're not quite as good as what we get with Warden. I mean, size size has something to do with it as well. Here's the backpack unit that I've pulled off. This can transform into a little drone. So before I do that, I'm going to show you there's a little piece of plastic in here which is used for the main transformation later. If you want to pull that off, you stick your thumbnail under it and you just bend it up. It's a little C-clip. I'm going to put it back there now in case I lose it. Uh, to transform this guy into his scout mode, I think that's what it's called, or drone tank, we just bend this up, click out the windshield, fold this over, put the wheels how you would like them to be, grab this thing here, and it's going to just peg in like so. Bend the armor forward, and that's basically it. In our little drone tank, we can either make it independent, being a drone, or I think it looks good as a kind of chariot for him to sit in and freewheel all over the place. Now you can see the missile spam, you can independently target them however you'd like. These wheels are fully working, easy to move in the hand. They're not so easy to move on a surface. You can see they're quite stiff when you do it like that. Uh, that's no big deal. It's no big deal because he's just going to sit on my shelf. I'm not planning on driving this figure around. One thing that I really love with the execution of this chariot mode is all the teeth on the tractor treads are pointing the correct way as if they were real. So when the engine would turn, it would drive them forward like this, digging into the ground. If this turned out to be in opposite directions or facing backwards, I would have been like, oh, come on, seriously. But I think this has really been planned out. I've set it flat now so I can try and show it with the wheels rolling. So I'm going to push down relatively hard. There we go. We do get some roll happening, but what also happens with that amount of force is that they start to tilt sideways on the ball joint. So it's really not very practical. I'm going to try and turn this into the tank mode now. Now it's a bit tricky. Sometimes I can do it. Sometimes I don't quite manage to do it. Let's hope it works this time. Flip the back of the arm out. Put the hands back in. Do the same on both sides. Flip that open, hand in. Uh, let's see. Let's get this out of the way so that I can bend the arms up into this position. And it's important to have them like this because in this position they peg together like that, making a nice bond. This section is actually going to come right off. There's a big face hiding in there. Okay, leave this sticking out because it's only in that position that it's going to end up in the right spot. Bend this up. I think that this flap has to be backwards like that for it to work. These panels at the back of the leg, we want to flip them over so that they're not poking out anymore. Uh, let's raise these like this. Then we're going to want to 
fold those feet down and carefully making sure that these panels don't get snapped off just rotate those thighs until the feet are kind of next to each other like this we want this bit to be straight the inside bits don't matter so much here's where that middle section is going to poke through that's the bulk of how the robot actually transforms the rest of it is just tabbing other pieces on and that's really where the trickiness comes I think it's kind of crucial to get those lower legs parallel somewhat at the expense of the thighs being parallel don't worry about the thighs so much worry about the lower legs now the instructions are pretty clear on this that the next piece that should go in is this chest armor and it has to tab between the feet I found it doesn't really work best in this order but I'm going to try and do it the way the instructions say just to see if it can be done we then have to grab our missile spam and there's two kinds this is the kind we don't want put that aside this is the kind we do want um, in the package mine came in this orientation I found that that doesn't really work the little bit of difference by putting it this way just gives a little bit more clearance and lets it tab in better so that tabbing is going to be between this part and this part let's try and do it I haven't got high hopes to be honest this is always a tricky business come on maybe the other side because the, what, what, what it is the whole thing wants to kind of explode in your hands and it's easy for them to say tab it in here and here on both sides simultaneously easy to say much less easy to do so I've got one side tabbed in two sides tabbed in so basically I'm holding this this and this all tabbed in It is by no means a secure situation but it's kind of done so I'm going to try and bend these little armor panels back down like this now that I've got all that loosely tabbed in I'm hoping to be able to put this backpack on underneath but the chances of it successfully happening are so slim and that's because uh, this is like you wouldn't believe how many takes this has been I'm gonna shove all this together go together god damn it I hope this kind of demonstrates how frustrating it can be uh, I tried many times to do this in one go on camera and I cannot do it it's it's a pretty pretty hopeless system they've got here for holding together the alt mode and blah, now I've got it all together we're gonna get this little guy in a seating sitting rather position put his feet on the platform of his chair now this thing here has a tab which is going to go between his legs and two more tabs that go into the roof I tend to just do the top ones first to get a good position then carefully get it down there where he is in theory this is going to tab into the black plastic here on both sides but if I try to show you that on camera it's going to disintegrate in front of me again it is highly highly annoying system that they've got here and I'm handling it with kid gloves so that it doesn't fall to pieces that is good enough for the purposes of this video then I've got to grab this face which I pulled off before with the little c-clip if you remember that c-clip clip the c-clip on and it's a bit weird how the instructions show it but they they show that it just tabs in here now I don't really feel that that's right uh, it also shows that these things tab in to the side of the big gun and that somehow a combination of the two things is going to be able to lock everything down now they're too far away from these tabs here to successfully lock them down um, if you look on the underside you can see where it's supposed to go in like one in here one in here I don't see how that's achievable so I'm just gonna plug it in like that and call it a tank this mode does have some merit it does look pretty decent um, 
but it is so fragile in this front area. The fragility makes it perfectly clear that this was an afterthought. Uh, Perfect Effect have wanted to give something to those who won't be transforming it into a head, maybe people who don't have Fortress Maximus, the big version. So this is a, a handout to them. I like it just fine, but you cannot play with this thing. It falls to pieces. It doesn't join together properly at the back. It is almost impossible to get together at the front. There have been occasions when I have transformed this in one go, getting every tab in and it all locking together exactly as it's supposed to lock together. Those occasions are far outweighed by the amount of times it just falls apart over and over and over and over and over again, driving me out of my mind. So that's the tank mode, uh, probably the least of the modes in my opinion. Now I'm going to transform him into the head mode for the big Fortress Maximus figure. I'm starting off with basically robot mode with his arms already above his head tabbed in just like I showed previously. Lift up all these skirts because they're going to be in the way. Extend out this big face and rotate it and flip it around. Now tilt back these panels and give yourself a little bit of clearance to rotate back these black thingos in here. Maybe going to even have to fold that down first. Once the black things have the smooth side pointing forward, bend these back down so that it locks them in and then fold them forward like that. Okay. Untab the groin and I'm going to rotate this now but I'm not rotating the waist which is up here. I'm rotating under the waist which is the lower part of the body. holding the top part still. Once it's all straight, re-tab the groin back down like that. Uh, then we're going to want to do this ab crunch, bending that in. And you can see that this part has disconnected itself. That's not uncommon. It tends to fall off all the time. Don't worry about it. Next, I'm going to grab the legs and turn him backwards and then just bend the legs back towards this ball part. So we've kind of made an S shape with his body, like this. Rotate at the thigh so that the legs are kind of flat like that. Now the next part is a little bit tricky. We've got to bend the heel, but not the front of the foot. So we're going to need the heels like that. There we go. We can move those out into this position. Untab the legs. The legs splay open like this. Rotate the foot around. Put this out. Flip this back. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Untab the leg, splay it open. Rotate this around that over. So we're really kind of opening everything up now. This bottom of the face is going to be able to just tab in into this front of his uh, cod piece like that. Now there's one little thing I've omitted here. The platform that you just saw me move is a actual command station for the little guy. So if you want, you can stand him in there, and then when you've got the head mode, he is in the head, basically looking out the eyes of Fortress Maximus. I'm not going to do that simply because I've abused him so much. I don't want to wreck him, so I'm not going to try to force him in there. It does work, but he tends to get stuck and fall out, and I don't want to do that to the figure any more than what's necessary. Before I go any, any more ahead, I just want to make sure that these panels aren't going to pop off. They are on ball joints, but I want to avoid it. Move this little thing back like that. And now we're really forming the main part of the head. So you can see it's starting to take shape. Uh oh I 
think they were meant to be up there before I did that because they tab into the cheeks. They tabbed in now. This tabs in at the back, in here. And on the other side. The arms bend down. That's pretty much it. After this, we just grab the uh, gun, put it into a kind of L shape, and slot it in. And there we have Fortress Maximus's head. And it's an amazing head at that. Uh, it's a surprisingly dense and solid block with hardly any gaps in there. It looks good, as far as I'm concerned, from pretty much any angle. Uh, there's not a lot of cues that give it away as being a robot that's bent up like that. The face is a good-looking face. The eyes are painted quite nicely. The only downside, really, is that if you don't have a light shining right at it, it can be hard to take photos and videos of because there's a lot of shade generated by these long protrusions at the front. I do have a light coming in at this angle. That's why you can see it on camera. It is hard to get that lit up under normal circumstances. Uh, this is not the first head for Fort Max I have. I think... The name of the one I got previously, Megatron Megabolt from Robots in Disguise. Uh, I think that's what it was. It was like some kind of little crab legs at the bottom. Uh, it was pretty much Megatron from Beast Machines, just repurposed. So I'm used to having other heads. This is by far the best head that I've got for Fort Max. Now, if you want, you can still tab some of these guns in, missile pods, over here. Although... I've kind of had to force that in because the slot that that goes into wasn't meant for this one. It was meant for the ones that uh, are up here that formed the front part of the forehead. So they have to be here, but you can still kind of push this in. I'm a bit dubious about doing it too much. It might loosen it up too much for normal use. So I tend not to do that. So let's get a look at this guy on Fortress Maximus. Depending on which country you come from, this is either Fort Max or Cerebros plugged into the top here. I'm going to pull him off, just a friction joint holding that on. There is quite a big size difference, definitely a huge mass difference, but the size difference is considerable. Um, especially when it comes to length, the size really shows up there. Guess that's not too much of a big deal, less of a big difference from the front. I do like the way these horns look. Pretty nice. Let's plug it on. To plug it on, all you gotta do is stick it in the slot. You can see that there's a neck now, which raises the head up a little bit. Depending on where you look at the figure, it can look good or it can look a bit comical. So I found that if you focus on this region and let your eyes stay on the head, the chest and what have you, it looks pretty good. If you pull back and your sight goes up, down, up, down, up, down, and you focus too much on the rest of the body, it does become pretty obvious that the head is oversized. Uh, look, I, I have him sitting down right now, and that's just because I don't have room in my setup here to show it properly. But from the top half of the body, you can see it's, it's, it's pretty good looking. Over here I've got the original gun that came with Fortress Maximus. I'm going to pop that one off. Here we've got the new gun. You can put it in either way. So I'm going to plug that in. You can see the stock at the back does fit if his arm's fully extended. But if you don't want the stock to be like that, you can just put it like regular old pistol and it still looks pretty damn good it's just like a better version of this gun to be honest that's it's really nice and it's impressive the way that the detailing carries right through from the figure to the gun so we've got a very attractive gunmetal gray here a silver stripe red stripe a glossy red here red detailing in the triangle very nice one thing I am kind of stoked about is that the inside of the barrel is continuous it's a hole that goes the whole way in I know it's not showing up there but it's not a fake barrel like there's one thing I can't stand it's barrels like this 
where it's just a blunt um, end. This barrel goes the whole way in. One final thing you can do to complete the set in Fort Max mode is take this drone and these little bits that stick out like this can slot into the indents at the side here. And then once it's in, you can just slide them up and it's locked into place. So look at that, that's a very secure bond. I wouldn't want it to fall backwards on that, it'll probably smash the set. Um, Fortress Maximus is a very stable figure, the weight of this is insignificant compared to him, so I don't think it's going to cause him to smash. But I'm not a fan of this, and I don't plan on ever doing it again after this video, and here is why. The friction involved with the insertion strips the paint off his, this, and it was such a nice looking paint, now it's kind of wrecked. I don't plan on doing that again. I don't want this to be totally ugly. Uh, I had to do it for the video. I mean, I can't not show the features. And by the time I'd figured out that it strips the paint, it was too late anyway. But um, if you don't want to have that, then don't do it. My final thoughts. This is an expensive toy. Uh, I think after shipping, it came close to $200 for me, maybe 170 something 180 something that's an expensive figure which is basically same size as other figures which are going for about a hundred or less but it is worth it I don't feel like I've been ripped off in any way uh, it's it's pretty high quality and as I said before I feel like this fits more in feels more at home with stuff like Soul of Chugokin than it does with third-party Transformers it's on a, a different level uh, it's very good. I've bought other very good third-party figures. I mean, notably the Quake Wave. This caters to a different area of collecting. It's more in line with classics or that kind of thing, whereas Quake Wave was 100% in the masterpiece category as far as I'm concerned. But um, I, I don't know if this is better than Quake Wave, but at least on par. I mean, if I had to have a list of my top five third-party Transformers ever. This is definitely in that, and it may even end up as number one. I just would like to think about it more than proclaim that straight away. Forgetting about everything else for a minute, though, this guy is really pure fun. So the, the poses you can get him into on the shelf, uh, like forgetting is he high-end, what's the materials like, how much does he cost, you can get him into such emotive positions and all his joints like he can, he can sit in any any which way you like and you can fiddle with him for literally hours he just looks so good if you're the kind of person who takes photos you can take some good good photos with this toy i haven't tried yet but i've i've seen a few people like tj duckett on transformers world 2005 he did a great photo shoot that i saw in the um, super clear thread and you can tell a story with this toy with the way you can pose him it's it's definitely worth having uh, is it worth close to 200 for me the answer is yes but it was a hard decision to come to uh, I had a bit of a hard time this month I had a minor traffic accident that I think I'm gonna have to pay for some damage in a car dentist bills for my son uh, an anniversary present I had to get for my wife. A lot of expensive stuff came up this month. I had to cancel, had to prune down severely my pre-orders, and a lot of things got the chop. A lot of hard choices had to be made. When it came down to Warden, I let it sit there and shipped it. And that's just because uh, I hadn't really seen anything like this. For the, the photos that I saw, it was looking like something special and it's turned out that it, it was not a wrong choice it is something special and I'm glad that I chose to keep this I've always liked perfect effect going right back to the little cassette dudes and then perceptor not perceptor what am I talking about reflector but uh, they kind of fell down from grace for me a little bit when it came to RC I didn't like their version of RC the motorbot 
as much as I liked the version distributed by iGear. I felt that their version was too blocky for the character. I felt that RC should be more kind of feminine and smooth. But their lines and their aesthetic really shine when it comes to a huge bulky figure like this. And uh, it's, it's really something to behold. And I'm looking forward to what comes next. So that's my video review for Perfect Effects Warden Figure, Super Robot Warden. I'm Odeon. Thank you for watching. Ooh.